we can catch them in their lie. It's a wireless monitoring device. You bring it in in any precinct, any polling thing, it'll pull all the, it'll show you the cell phones online. It works on cellular internet too, everything. We've got Mike Lindell, of all people, on screen here. So as it turns out, Mike Lindell held another cyber symposium. Um, back in, I don't know, 2021, I think, he held this stupid cyber symposium where he claimed to have evidence of election fraud, which, great, if he has it, fine, fantastic, turn it over. Of course, he didn't have a, a lick of evidence. Big surprise. He claimed that his evidence was accessible on his website, frankspeech.tv. So I go there. I happen to find that none of it is evidence. It's just like receipts, like purchase orders and stuff of like voting machines from counties and stuff. And that's it. It was like nothing surprising. It was just all stuff that I expected to see. Well, eventually he ended up taking that evidence, as he called it, pulling out the air quotes, evidence. He ended up taking that down. I'm guessing it had something to do with the Dominion lawsuits. Now, if you didn't know... Mike Lindell, we're going to watch this video from him, by the way. He held this cyber symposium, and I want to watch a little bit of it. Well, anyway, Lindell forever ago claimed to have all this voter fraud. He took it off of his website, and I suspect the reason he took it off of his website is because he's being sued for a billion dollars by Dominion voting systems and Smart Smartmatic voting systems. Just like Fox News was sued by the by Dominion and settled with them for seven hundred and fifty something million. Now, I don't know exactly how it works because I'm not a lawyer, but I believe that one of the defenses to defamation to uh, like what Mike Lindell is being sued for is he really believes it. So in my opinion, I don't believe this guy is as crazy as he wants everybody to think he is. I think he's playing an act. He's doing a bit to try to convince everybody around him that he's nuts to save himself a billion dollars that he doesn't even have. So that's my humble. This is just this man's humble opinion. We'll see how this pans out with his whole thing or whatever so anyways he's got this cyber symposium thing i don't know is this number three or four i don't know how many he's had so far i wanted to listen to what he had to say this is actually done by the flashpoint crew i cover them a lot it's a tv show flashpoint run by uh this guy on the right gene bailey and it's on kenneth copeland's victory network so i wanted to listen to them interview mike lindell at his ridiculous symposium Let's just step to the beginning here, see what they have to say for themselves. It's, go it's bound to be absurd. It always is with these people. And while we listen to these nutter butters spread their nutter buttery all over everything, we are going to play a video game. Uh, just something to have on in the background so I don't get bored of sin, because I know you guys aren't bored of sin, but I, you know, I get bored of sin sometimes. So I'm going to listen to some of this stuff while playing a game. This is a system that I have that has a number of different games. We've got um, the NES, we've got um, PlayStation, you know, a Genesis 32X, a Super Nintendo, Virtual Boy, we've got all of it. So we're going to be playing, give it a second here, Pokemon, oh, Pokemon Emerald, no, I'm sorry, Ultraviolet. So it's it's like Fire Red. It's a ROM hack of Fire Red, right? And Ultraviolet has every Pokemon available. And you can catch every one of them, even the next gen ones, even the Emerald like Pokemon. So anyway, it's a homemade device that I threw together myself. I even 3D printed the parts and everything to make it look like a Super Nintendo. It's really cool. So I went through the whole opener beforehand so we don't have to do that, you know, entering your name and all that. So here we go. This is the beginning of the game. Let's listen to Lindell spread his nutter buttery all over everything. Welcome to Flashpoint Live. We are here in Springfield, Missouri. And with me, Mike Lindell here at the Election Crime Summit. Uh, Mike. Oh, he's calling it an Election Crimes Summit now. Okay, interesting. It's been a crazy two days. A lot, a lot of information. 
yes, it's, uh, we're, I'm getting to the end, and I'll tell you, a year since I had that first uh, seed yeah. planted by God in prayer. Right. That we would have a plan to secure our elections immediately. And yeah, and, it's ama- and we're going to get into... It's been a year since he's had his first seed planted by God. What is all this? I was expecting him to say it's been a year since we've started looking for evidence and we found it. Would you be surprised to find out that he turns over absolutely zero evidence? He's got not a lick of evidence to give to us. Anybody surprised by that? Honestly, he's got nothing. Seriously, this whole thing was just like a propaganda effort. This whole symposium that he held. If you have evidence of malfeasance, give it to us. And guess what? You got a believer just like that. That's all I'm looking for is a little evidence, man. He can't give me that. Quick interjection. I won't take long. I just wanted to tell you guys, YouTube's algorithm operates off of a few factors. Watch time, whether or not you subscribe, and whether or not you like something. So if you really want to help my channel, I would appreciate it if you guys watch the video to the end. If you don't watch it to the end, just watch a little bit longer than you would have otherwise. I would appreciate that very much. All right, let's get back to the video some of the amazing stuff now the event still as you can see is still going on behind us uh, we've been talking to a lot of people met a lot of people we see every year and i have noticed the event itself is growing bigger and bigger it seems like yeah yeah we had uh we had a thousand people we had to limit it at, at the, we had to cap it you know yeah and that was where i didn't buy it so we, a thousand people i mean i don't believe a word out of these people's mouths they lie professionally like for a living they do it so don't believe anything that they say, first of all. And second, they had to cap it at a thousand people, huh? Okay. Interesting. You know, we send out the invites and uh we probably sent out, I'm not kidding, maybe twelve hundred invites, a thousand showed up. So yeah, you know, that so good. that's amazing. Good know? ROI there. Right, huh? right. But there's <laughs> I heard there there was like four million people have watched so far now. So that's I just heard that in the back. Yeah. So this well, I get four million people just watched, huh? According to Mike Lindell. Well, I guess a few a few more are watching with us, huh? This has been amazing. Been a and great that's event. what we needed for the plan to succeed that people know about it. Well, and you know, we've talked about it on the show fact for the plan to succeed. What plan exactly? What plan does he have to what? Take the election back? For Trump or some other nonsense? By the way, this is a shiny. I don't go shiny hunting. Not worth my time. I just want to make note. I think that's kind of cool. Right, let me bring in uh, live uh, Rick Green. Rick, are you there? Hey, hey, Gene. Hey, Mike. Good to see you hey. all. Okay, if you don't know Rick Green, he, God, the description says America's Constitution coach. Uh, in reality, he's basically like a far right extremist who is dead set on convincing the world really that america was founded on christian principles the founders were all christian nationalists and they all believed that christianity should should rule supreme and if you're not christian you don't belong in the country that was kind of the belief so anyway that's what he teaches people it's all nonsense it's lies like he it's a it's revisionist history I wish I was there with you. Thank yeah. you Rick, for what you're doing. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. I, Rick, uh, you know, we've talked about this once before and what Mike's dealing with here in Springfield is there's a lot of people I've noticed as we've gone through the year. Uh, it's real easy to get election fatigue or uh, with Trump indictment fatigue. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. It's kind of interesting. Indictment fatigue or election fatigue. And they're recognizing that people are kind of sick of hearing about all this stupid garbage and they want to move on with their lives. Um, that's a really interesting thing for these people to recognize, right? These people are the Trumpiest of the Trumpiest people alive. This program that we're watching right now is basically Donald Trump in TV form. These, these are his thoughts put into like video form, basically, without him actually speaking it. So... Anything that benefits Donald Trump, you'll find it right here. Every propaganda technique, every fallacy that he uses to take advantage of people or whatever, it's uh, it can all be found on this TV show, Flashpoint. It's insane. Right. But, I mean, we, we see a lot of this going every time 
Um, it, it seems like uh, you keep getting hit back again and again. But, Mike, one thing that we saw was a lot of hope yesterday. Yep. A lot of people talking about hope. every state had hope. Every state. That's There was no hope. What, what Hope for what exactly? Tell me what you're hoping for, Mike. Are you hoping? Oh, hey, check it out. A shiny. So I guess I will catch this one. Why not, right? Are they hoping that they're going to put Trump back in office before the 2024 election? Is that... Is that like the goal right now? That was the goal originally. Or have they moved off of that and they've moved all the way to, okay, fine. We don't care if he's president right now, but we're going to try to get him reelected anyways. Where are like, where are their heads now? I wonder exactly. So important. Yeah. And we put up state by state, a state by state hope report, then the national hope report. And what we mean by hope is remember this is this, Summit was about our election platforms. Right. So we did a report card of each one in 18. What was their report? What was their grade in 18 of their elections? Then 20, then 22. And Oh, Mike Lindell is giving states a grade in how well they did in their elections, huh? I wonder what grade certain states are going to get. Well, I, You know what? I'll place money and bet that... If it's a blue state, then it's going to be like a terrible grade. But if it's a red state, it's like an A. I'd bet anything that that's what we're going to look at. Do we even really need to see the stupid grading system that he's got? And all you see when, right? Yeah. Well, then you, and people lose hope. Like you say, they don't hear any the good things going on. So then the people came out, the representatives of every state and said, hey, here's hope here. My yeah. state of Minnesota, I didn't think we had any. And he got up there and there said there go. was hope. You know? Yeah, that's good. So that's why it's important. Stay yeah, they're starting to realize that when you scare the shit out of people for long enough and you give them absolutely nothing to like look forward to and you don't give them any kind of hope whatsoever, it usually ends badly. It ends with people resenting you and feeling like shit and feeling terrible. And they don't want anything to do with anything anymore. They just want to separate from politics. That's why usually when I talk about this kind of thing, it's more of a laughing matter than anything. Like these people are failing miserably, obviously. I'm not trying to scare the shit out of anybody. I'm trying to laugh at some people and succeeding gloriously for the record. Stay engaged and stay tuned in. Rick, we did not get to this on Tuesday night, so I want to hurry up and get to this. Let's talk about the Trump indictments that we have. Yeah. I want to play this quick clip for you. Okay, for the record, these people did an entire like episode on the Trump indictments that were happening. I talked about the episode. It was uh, I only talked about like the first half, but you know the first thirty minutes of it. You know why? Because, look, the title of it was, let's see if it's in the list here. <clears throat> here, uh, Flashpoint, Trump indicted again. We break it down, August 3rd, 2023. And literally, the entire thing was about Hunter Biden. Did they even mention Trump once? I don't remember them ever mentioning Donald Trump, even one time. The election strategy or the strategy to protect Trump, for lack of a better term, from the indictments is to complain about Hunter Biden. That's the goal. That's that's the bit. That's what they're doing. They these people are shameless. Seriously. Do you think Swifties are a cult talking about um, Taylor Swift fans? I think that people can become overly attached to certain people but it it has to be you know there's some qualifications for something to be a cult um it kind of requires intent on the leader's part to some degree in my opinion uh intent to control people um intent to get them to exhibit certain behaviors that are beneficial to the leader or the group to some degree they uh exert destructive influence upon their followers now people can be absolutely unhinged from reality and crazy about taylor swift and you know defend her to the death and that's like you know that's not healthy at all and you need to get help if that's what's going on but i don't think that taylor swift is leading a cult no
Donald Trump, on the other hand, is leading a cult because you can very clearly see he is intentionally setting out to take advantage of people and control them and only let them receive information about media or news or whatever from him or his approved sources, uh, that kind of thing. And he uses propaganda techniques, so on and so forth. Mike Lindell is an utter butter on another level. What is he on? Because I don't see Trump going back to the White House. Yeah, it's not happening. I think he's just trying to draw attention to himself and convince people that he really does believe this nonsense. Because if he can convince them that he believes it, then he's, he, you know, I think that he believes that he's safe from prosecution or not prosecution, but safe from the defamation lawsuit. Now, I don't know if that's actually going to play out the way that he expects it to. I'm not convinced that him acting crazy and convincing everybody that he really does believe this stuff. I'm not convinced that's actually going to help him at the end of the day. We'll see what happens, but I honestly believe that's his strategy. Watch, uh, this is Alan Dershowitz, what he had to say right before the indictment came down from Atlanta. Watch. Okay, so just a little background on what's happening here. Alan Dershowitz is about to give us his opinion on this. If you don't know Alan Dershowitz, he was Jeffrey Epstein's lawyer. Really? Jeffrey Epstein's lawyer. You know all that screaming and crying these people do about Jeffrey Epstein? Suddenly all that goes right out the window when one of his lawyers, and by the way, one of his clients, takes their side with something. It goes right out the window. They're willing to believe anything this guy has to say under any circumstances, no matter what. It's an embarrassment, honestly. Alan Dershowitz is terrible in every way. And that's just like the tip of the iceberg with the dude. Yeah, he was Jeffrey Epstein's attorney. Could you believe that it, he's even worse than that? I'm not going to get into it right now. But anyway, he's a hardcore Trump defender um, is the point. And he's about to give us his take on Donald Trump being indicted for, I think, the fourth time. I don't know. What are we up to now? Are we up to seven, eight, nine, ten? Who, who knows? Now, I think we're up to four currently, and this one was the one from Georgia, Fannie Willis. So let's listen to Dershowitz's take on this situation. Jesus, what a scumbag, dude. Dershowitz, what he had to say right before the indictment came down from Atlanta. Watch. Well, first of all, nobody should take it all seriously, the fact that there was a grand jury indictment. It means nothing. It's the prosecutor who indicted. The best evidence of that is that it was on his website before the grand jury even voted now well okay i don't know exactly what he's talking about there but a grand jury for the record if you're unfamiliar with how this works a, a grand jury votes on whether or not they think that somebody is guilty based on probable cause um, a very low standard of evidence and it's basically just intended to make a determination as to whether or not there should be a trial. So based on a low standard of evidence, they looked at the facts and determined there should be a trial against Donald Trump. That's what a grand jury does. Um, I, it doesn't mean nothing the way that he's saying here. It actually does mean something. He was charged with a crime by a grand jury voted upon by a group of people who objectively looked at the facts and decided that this warrants criminal prosecution. The whole strategy of all these four cases is to get a conviction before the election, even if they're going to lose on appeal. I used to teach my students, many of them future prosecutors, if you bring... Okay, first, that's not the goal. Um, he's making this out to be a politically motivated thing. It's not. Biden is completely unconnected to any of this intentionally. Donald Trump broke the law over and over and over again. This is all Donald Trump's fault. They're like he, he can't weasel his way out of this by pretending to be politically persecuted. It's nonsense. And the vast majority of the United States can see that it's just garbage. It's just red meat for his 
little group of nutter butters, basically. On appeal. I used to teach my students, many of them future prosecutors, if you bring a RICO case, that in- right, because he taught at Harvard University at one point, I think, before become Je- uh, before becoming Jeffrey Epstein's lawyer and client, if you will. Increases your chances of winning a trial and losing on appeal. The same thing is true with conspiracy and other cases involving mental states. And so all four of these cases are designed to get quick, quick convictions in jurisdictions that are heavily loaded against Donald Trump. And these prosecutors don't. Well, I mean, these jurisdictions are where he committed the crimes. So if he didn't want to be charged in these jurisdictions, maybe he should have committed the crimes somewhere else. You ever think about that one? Aside from that, um, you know, there is something I've come to understand called, I think, forum shopping is what it's called. And uh, the general idea is people will go to specific forums or specific districts that are more advantageous to them. Uh, That's not good. Both sides do it. There's, There's nothing new about it. It's just one of those corrupt things about our system. I don't like that rich billionaires give people on the left money, and I don't like it that rich billionaires give people on the right money. But everyone's giving everyone else money, so, yeah. I don't care as much as prosecutors generally do about having the convictions reversed on appeal, because that will happen after the election, which only goes to prove what I've been arguing now for, for months. If you're going after the man who's running against your incumbent president, you would darn well better have the strongest case possible. And these are among the four, at least three of them, three weakest cases. No, no, they're not weak cases against Donald Trump. These are extremely strong cases against him. All of them are. Um, I can't believe that he's even, like, taking this position. Again, this dude is like a law professor at Harvard, I think, or was before becoming Jeffrey Epstein's client and lawyer. Um, I'm not exactly sure... I mean, he's not giving us any reason to think that these are weak cases. He didn't cite anything at all. Epsilon the Dragon, in the words of one George Wood of gaming in the Clinton years, you got to cheat to win. I didn't hear about that. Um, I hope, like, I I obviously would not stand for that. I'm sure nobody in the chat would stand for that. Shouldn't have to cheat to win. Maybe you do, but you shouldn't have to. Catch-22 moment, trying to get out of somebody, I'm sorry, Trying to get out of something by claiming crazy and while trying to prove it makes one look sane, right? Interesting. Absolutely absurd, man. Everything about this situation is is absurd. And Trump is obsessed with making himself out to be the biggest victim alive when he's born with a platinum spoon in his mouth. It's just disgusting, dude. You know, Trump grew up in New York City. I'm in New York City. The wealth disparity that you see here is horrific. You see people sleeping on subway trains because they have nowhere else to sleep. You see cops hassling people who are sleeping on the side in subway stations. Where else are they going to go? What else are they going to do? It's just, it's just not good, man. And also, not everybody in New York City is rich. That's a misconception. Um, There are a lot of middle class, lower class, and poor that live in Manhattan, even. Working class people that are just trying to get by, like servers, uh, people who work at restaurants, just trying to, you know, make enough to live and get by. That's it. Just like everybody else. So it's a little bit of a misconception to think that they're all rich that live there. Anyway, let's keep listening. I've ever seen against any candidate. We don't know about the fourth, but it seems like it's very much like the D.C. case. And if you're going after the man running for president against your person, you have to have the strongest case. Otherwise, it becomes a banana republic. Any.
Okay, these are extremely powerful cases, first of all. And second, Biden's completely unconnected to any of these cases. Biden is not prosecuting these. He's not even talking about these cases. As a matter of fact, he specifically, to my knowledge, asked the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, not to talk about this, not to fundraise off of this or make a big deal out of this. This is a solemn occasion. This should not be celebrated. Uh, uh, an ex-president being charged with a crime. It's sad that we're in this situation. And it's dangerous, too. You know that uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, not too long ago, basically said... The moment we take power back, the moment there's another Republican president, we are going after everybody from the top to the bottom. We are charging everybody with a crime. They said lock Hillary up in the 2016 campaign. Well, they're really going to do it now. They are really going after their political opponents once they take political control, which usually happens about every eight years. I think Biden's got four more years, in my opinion. But after that, I think we're going to see a Republican governor who, no matter what, is probably going to pardon Donald Trump and a lot of his friends and start going after, you know, other political people, other people on the left. In my opinion, that's what we're going to see. Dangerous. It's a dangerous precedent. Anybody can prosecute anybody. And that's exactly, uh, Rick, that's exactly what we have. Anybody can prosecute anybody if we get down this path of... Really? Anybody can prosecute anybody? You don't say. Wow, that knocked me over with a feather. Yes, of course, anybody can prosecute anybody. If you commit a crime, you can expect to be prosecuted. This is what drives me nuts about Donald Trump when he says... If they can come after me, they can come after you. Yes, yeah. Are you getting it yet? If you commit a crime, you can expect to be prosecuted for that crime, I, no matter who you are. Or that's how it should work. A banana republic. What do you think, uh, Rick, where we are with these indictments with President Trump? I, I think they're going for exactly what you said to Mike earlier. It's the fatigue of the indictments, just like the fatigue of trying to fix the elections, which is why what you guys are doing there is so important and why my, I see my buddy Senator Pat Colbeck is on stage right now, knowing that guy 15 years. Those kind of people, like Pat and Mike and Joel and all these guys that have Okay, I don't know who that is, but I personally prefer Pat Sajak. ...been in the trenches willing to do this when other people get bored with it, they get tired of it, they don't want to right. do the scratching and clawing, they don't want to do the mundane work that it takes to have good, reliable elections, but these guys are doing it, and that's what I'm so thankful for. Same thing with the indictments. Right. They're trying to wear us out. They're trying to get voter fatigue. They're trying to get people to think, well, my goodness, man, if he's been indicted a hundred and something times, he must be guilty of something. Right. Thankfully... Well, Trump is guilty of something. Yeah, he's guilty of an awful lot. And he's been getting away with stuff like his whole life. He was sued by the Nixon administration of all things. The Nixon administration for refusing to rent to black tenants in New York City. No joke. Back in, I think, the 70s or 80s. I don't remember when. He's also been found guilty of rape officially in a civil trial. From my understanding, the judge clarified recently that he is guilty of rape. So, he, yeah, he's definitely guilty of something. A few things, at the very least. Now, we're going to wait and see how this plays out, but it seems pretty obvious to me that Trump is guilty of a little bit more than just that. This man, if he's been indicted a hundred and something times, he must be guilty of something. Right. Thankfully, Donald Trump is not the kind of guy that's going to get fatigued. He's that's not right. going to cave. We cannot cave. I Trump doesn't get fatigued and he doesn't cave? What? Are we talking about the same dude? This guy caves at the slightest tap l just loses his mind and starts crying about everything and being a victim and everything non-stop it's insane what the hell are you talking about right now andrew palmer if trump wins after all of this i'm moving to luxembourg uh, luxembourg it's incredible how far out of touch these maga conservatives are i love your stuff btw thank you so much glad you like my stuff yeah 
if Trump if Trump wins after this, I might actually consider moving to Canada. I don't know. I just hope I don't actually have to move because I really like it in America, is specifically in New York City. Anyway, thank you for the uh thank you for the super chat. Just hope for the best, man. I I don't think Trump's going to win. I think his political career is over, to be perfectly honest. I think the Republican Party hitching their little red wagon to Donald Trump's caboose, if you will, was the worst idea that they've ever had. And they should really, really be trying to separate themselves from him desperately because he is a losing candidate. He is going to bring them like the greatest loss that the Republican Party has ever seen. Ron DeSantis used to be popular in the Republican Party when people thought he was a moderate. Then he acted like a nutcase. Everybody realized that he was even worse than Trump, and no one wants to vote for him now. Republican Party's looking for a moderate right now, somebody that has a real chance. So, yeah, I think... Them going after, uh, I'm sorry, I think them hitching themselves to Trump was a terrible idea. Hopefully Donald Trump is not the kind of guy that's going to get fatigued. He's that's not right. going to cave. We cannot cave either, yeah. which is why what you're saying is 100% right. We've got to keep coming back over and over. No, it's not 100%. Like, there, literally, there's nothing right about what he just said. Nothing. Over and over again. And, uh, you know, the indictments themselves. Listen, guys, if, if Trump and Jenna and, and John Eastman and all of them are guilty of whatever these ridiculous indictments, then yeah. Mike and Gene and Rick and everybody that's questioned the election and asked for verification and wanted the Constitution to follow, be followed, we're all guilty. And no, 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 that's incorrect. So what he's doing here is framing it as though Trump is being charged and uh, John Eastman and, you know, all the other people that are being charged, Giuliani and everything. He's he's pretending that they're being charged with just talking, just saying, I think the election was rigged. That's not what they're being charged with. They are being charged with an actual election, a, a scheme to try to prevent the tr the peaceful transfer of power. That's what's happening right now. And we're going to be in jail as well. They're criminalizing elections themselves so and true. verifying elections. They are. They, they, no, not true. Like literally at all. Nothing that he said was true just now. In fact, uh, let me show you, speaking of indictments, let's go. Let me show you this from Fannie um, Willis and uh, the, the whole Trump indictment from Fulton County. In case you didn't see it, watch this. Yeah, so if you don't know, this is his fourth indictment, I believe, that they're referring to now. And Fannie Willis, I think her name is pronounced Fannie Willis. I'm not sure. But uh, she indicted him for unrico charges, basically. Racketeering. Um, this is what... Giuliani used to go after the mob in New York City, really. Uh, it's crazy that they've decided to go this route. I mean, it's totally justified, 100%. I just can't believe that it's actually happening. I can't believe Trump's actually facing accountability for what he, he's done, you know? I mean, even in the form of a criminal trial, even though he hasn't been convicted yet, I just hope to see some results from this. And yes, I am cheating. As you can see in the background, I'm cheating again. I have a save state that I keep reloading until I find a damn Pikachu. Pikachus are impossible to find in Viridian Forest, but I'm going to find one if it's the death of me. So anyway, let's keep listening. Oh, see? Right there. There's the Pikachu. Anyway, let's keep listening here. Thank you for joining us. I'm here with the prosecutors and investigators. Uh, that's Fannie Willis. Investigators who have worked diligently on the investigation of criminal attempts to interfere in the administration of Georgia's 2020 presidential election. Today, based on information developed by that investigation, a Fulton County grand jury returned a true bill of indictment. All right, uh, like I said, we're here at uh Mike Lindell's election crime summit. And when we're talking about crime, uh, we're gonna get to some great news that Mike had here in just a minute. I'm, 
I'm laying it all out for you. Look at this indictment. Uh, Donald Trump's, this is tweet three, gentlemen. Donald Trump's indictment just released, Fulton County. But listen, what you may not have heard, all the defendants include Rudy Giuliani, John Eastman, Mark Meadows, Jenna. Uh, yeah, there were a whole bunch of defendants. And um, I, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Jenna Ellis because I believe that she openly endorsed Ron DeSantis earlier, like way before. I think before he cratered in um, support. Any one of these people could flip on the other at any given moment. Which is it going to be? How many people we got? 17 defendants, I think, maybe? Or 11? I'm not sure exactly how many defendants we got, but a lot of these people have already backed away from Trump and are very unhappy with him. And it's only a matter of time before one of them looks for a deal, right, from prosecutors. Ellis, David Schaefer, and others, it's, it's like throwing, Mike, the, the whole gambit at the, they're just throwing everything up there and uh, hoping to get right. something to stick. Well, what they're doing, it's just... Uh... Well, they're not throwing the whole gambit up and hoping something will stick. Every charge that has, you know, been put to Donald Trump has evidence behind it, hard evidence that's been presented to a jury of Donald Trump's peers to determine if there's any legitimacy to a trial or if there would be any legitimacy to it. It's not throwing whatever they can at it and see what sticks. That's that's not what's happening right now at all. Uh, and it's not working. They Any other time in history, you can full, throw these fake charges or whatever, that this one here, the Georgia one, actually proves the crime that we're talking about here, the that's election right. crime. And that How? How does it? What is he talking about? Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what he's referring to here, like w what happened in Georgia, you're watching five years in the future or something like that. Um, I don't have the clip. Well, anyway, he called the, uh, I believe the Secretary of State of Georgia. I think that's who handles elections. And he said, is Brad Raffensperger. He says, I need you to find 11,780 votes. That's one more than we have. There's nothing wrong with saying you recalculated and you found those votes. And they said, look, I just, you didn't win. Okay, Biden got more votes than you. That's just what it is. I'm sorry. And that pissed him off so much. It was ridiculous. Um, and that's who's being charged with right now. That's like a smoking gun, honestly. Actually proves it. He's reading in this beautiful call where he's reading off. He beautiful call, he says. This beautiful call where he's reading off what? Right. Crime. It actually proves it. He's reading in this beautiful call where he's reading off. He's reading off stuff of all these non-residents that voted in Georgia and all this. Yeah. So that didn't happen. Non-residents voting in Georgia did not happen. See, interestingly enough, there's this pact between the states where they all work together to ensure that like they have the they share a system to ensure that there isn't a person that's registered in two states at the same time and if they are they kick them off the rolls and i think that's a good thing you know people shouldn't be registered in two states simultaneously i mean it, there's nothing wrong with that happening though you know i'm registered in west virginia i moved to new york city and now i'm registered in new york city that's just kind of how the world works you know people move or whatever um you don't you're not expected to unregister when you leave an area or whatever so anyways um dead people were not voting people who weren't from you know who were out of state or whatever they they were not voting it's all completely made up like all of it and mike lindell wants you to think otherwise desperately because this is all he has. If you don't believe that there was election fraud, then d his whole life doesn't make any sense. Or, at the very least, if you don't believe that he believes that there's election fraud, then he is in a lot of trouble. He is He's in it deep. Because he's got a civil trial right now that he is going to lose right now if he doesn't Find some way to convince people that he is not at fault. 
reading off. He's reading off stuff of all these non-residents that voted in Georgia and all that. Yeah. So, I mean, but I want to tell you, and I talked to our real president just the other day, a couple of days. Real president. I guess Lindell doesn't think that Trump is, or uh, that Biden is the real president. Okay, go on. I'm with you. Let him cook. So, I mean, but I want to tell you, and I talked to our real president just the other day, a couple of days ago, and uh, I and I said it. We, I think we have it on Flashpoint after the third indictment. You're right. And I talked to him then, and I said, "Sir, I said you can't. Every time you get an indictment, your polls go up another ten percent." That's right. And then, and then, That's not true. No, uh, his indictments are actually affecting his polls negatively, or not at all. It just kind of depends on you know who they're polling and what's being asked and. Uh, what's you know what he's been indicted of and things like that, so it just completely made up, of course. And, and the bad, and the the other bad opponents, whatever, keep going down, which they should all just endorse him right now. That's right. I, I mean, agree. after this fourth indictment, that sealed his win right there. Yeah. Any, no, it didn't. Any other didn't. time in history, there is no indictment fatigue. They think there that was their plan. They thought there would be indictment fatigue. Yeah. But you know what? No one's fatigued of trying to save your country. That's ever. exactly we're right. Thank you we're for not tired, that. and we're never getting. Tired. We're not not getting tired, and you know it's it's. This is the point. I'm. Your mom never gets tired either. Trying to get to you tonight is that you may be think you're tired, but with this don't give up. That it's always darkest right. Sorry, I I got to clarify. Um, I'm talking about Mike Lindell's mother. She never gets tired. Sorry, Mike. Is that. You may be think you're tired, but with this, don't give up. It's always darkest right before the dawn, right? So we're pushing through. We're going to see some great things happen. All right, so I want to play. Yeah, so they've started to realize that their audience is getting really, really discouraged, and that's like the last thing you want with an audience. You do not want them to feel discouraged under any circumstances. So they are kind of flipping around, changing their tune, and trying to make people feel like there's some level of hope rather than scaring the shit out of him uh scaring the shit out of him like they've been doing up to this point using what's called fud fear uncertainty and doubt that's the uh is it a propaganda technique i'm not sure maybe it is fear uncertainty and doubt that's what they use to sow um discord and to raise donations and all this other stuff play this clip before we talk to Mike about what he revealed today, this is um, Newt Gingrich on Charlie Kirk. Uh, is his pro? Both of those people are insane. Program, and he and he said something. Now listen to what Newt Gingrich had to say. This will give you an insight on the corrupt nature of what's going on in D.C. Watch. That I am told. This is hearsay, but I am told. Hearsay, huh? Interesting. Well, like I said, Newt Gingrich is absolutely insane. He is a nutter butter of epic proportions. And he's about to give us some hearsay by his own admission, his own words. This is going to be crazy, right? Told by a reliable source. A, oh, it's a reliable source now. Okay, go on. That Friday evening, somebody from Washington called the district attorney in Atlanta and said, you have to indict on Monday. We have to cover up all of the mistakes we just made with Weiss. And she said, hmm. apparently... Dude, what the hell is he even talking about right now? Is he saying that there was some plot to, like, indict Trump that, like, I don't know, the Democrats are controlling when he's indicted or whatever other nonsense? I think that's what he's communicating right now. Of course, no evidence whatsoever for any of this, right? But it came from a quote-unquote reliable source, of course. Oh, my God, I didn't mean to switch to this Pokemon. That's really annoying. Well, I always have the option to cheat, right? I love cheating because I have save states and stuff. It's the best. My jurors aren't coming back till Tuesday, and they said, you didn't hear me. You have to indict on Monday. And she said, well, they're not going to get here before noon. They said, it doesn't matter. She said, this, this means it's going to be 8 or 9 or 10 o'clock at night. They said, it doesn't matter. We need the news so media shifting who, who, off who of made that phone call? Yeah, who the hell are you talking about? Of course, he's going to say, I have to protect my sources. Nobody made that phone call. He's making it up. He's been making this stuff up all along. It's complete nonsense. We don't know. And I'm, it's, and I'm telling you up front, this is hearsay, but it's from a person who has remarkably good I, sources. I, I, oh, it's, a, it's hearsay, and 
it just changed. He said that he heard it from the original source, but now it's no longer the original source notice. It's he's hearing it from somebody who has good sources. So it's not one degree of separation. Now it's two degrees of separation. It changes as we go along. It gets more um, spread out. It, we know each other even less than we did before. It's just insane, man. It's, and I'm telling you up front, this is hearsay, but it's from a person who has remarkably good I, sources. I, I totally believe it, though, because that would explain why they leaked and they messed up on the clerk document. I totally believe it, though. Why she was exhausted <laughs> and why they had the 11 p.m. press conference, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there, there you go. It could very well have been exactly that. Look, did he just call Newt Gingrich Mr. Speaker? Was Newt Gingrich Speaker of the House? I think he was at one point, right? Uh, he was Speaker of the House from 1995 to 1999. He's a two-term Speaker of the House 25 years ago. Why is he referring to him as Mr. Speaker? Press conference, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there, there you go. It could very well have been exactly that. Now, I, th I find that interesting because it does kind of add up. Dude, these people are shameless because it does kind of add up. He just created a conspiracy theory out of absolutely nothing and said, I'm not going to give you any evidence. I'm not going to tell you who told me this. I could be making this up entirely just right off the top of my head if I wanted. And you would never know any different and everybody all the way down the line charlie kirk and uh the you know gene bailey rick green and mike lindell and all the other people they're gonna believe it without question isn't it fascinating to watch how some of these people have the most ridiculous obnoxious unfounded skepticism about certain things like evolution the fact of evolution. They refuse to accept that evolution is a fact. But when it comes to stuff like this, oh, yeah, we'll believe anything. Absolutely whatever. Yeah, sure. Why not? But then let's go to today. Today at 1 o'clock Central, Mike, you, you brought out some new information uh, about... Oh, new information. Here's the new info Mike Lindell dropped. Okay, go on. I don't actually know what this is. I haven't listened to this yet. Out elections and how we can make sure voting is actually happening the right way. So walk us through what you got in your hand there. Yeah, well, the uh, one of the things uh, that's been told to us, everyone, no matter... Wait, he's using weasel words. Notice what he's doing here? That's a technical term. It's not an insult. Weasel words are some ambiguous call-out to some authority figure without specifying who it is. Do you catch that? Listen again. Well, the, uh, one of the things uh, that's been told to us. One of the things that's been told to us. By who? Who told you these things? I is he going to reveal that? He's using weasel words right now. Be skeptical when people use weasel words like that. Everyone, no matter what machine company, no matter what, uh, what election clerk we talk to, what media you're hearing behind, uh, we went through, they went through the media things before. Everyone said... The machines are not online. Our, our routers, our voting machines. That's correct. Machines were not connected to the internet. Machines are pulling, but no, they're not online. They're not online. They're not online. They're not online. This was, everybody heard this, and that, that lie blocked us from. It's not a lie. They were not connected to the internet. They're not online. This was, everybody heard this, and that, that lie blocked us from getting our cyber evidence out every time we go to counties to get rid of the machines or go to paper but it doesn't happen here we're not online we're not online so look if they're not online they're not hiding something from you they're they're just not online these systems are not designed to connect to the internet are you kidding me they're not online it would be a it would be an ill-advised decision to connect these machines to the internet for Anybody, you know, anybody should be able to agree with that. You should not connect them to the Internet, because guess what? Here's a little fun fact for you. If it's connected to the Internet, it's hackable. There is nothing out of reach of somebody who's determined enough on the Internet. That's why cryptocurrency companies keep a hot wallet and a cold wallet, and the cold wallet is always disconnected from the Internet. It's the only way to keep it safe. 
So these voting machines were not online. Is he saying that he discovered that they were or something? Counties to get rid of the machines or go to paper, but it doesn't happen here. We're not online. We're not online. So this plan, this device here is a wireless monitoring device. It was developed, it's the only one I believe in the world. We have, well, we have quite a few and we're making mass producing them. What they do is they monitor. Like He's using weasel words again. You catching this? What they do. Who's they? in this situation you see how he's doing this usually when you use the word they you've already established the subject of the sentence so i'm talking about mike lindell and gene bailey when i say they they are using weasel words we all understand who i'm referring to who's mike lindell referring to when he says they he's not referring to anybody he's referring to like the deep state he's trying to make you believe something without actually providing evidence for it and not providing sources for his, you know, his information that he's come up with. That's what he's doing right now. And we're making mass producing them. What they do is they monitor, like if when you go into a room and you have a phone, it tells you all the internet's available, right? Right. It's just passively captured. Right. So he's talking about... When you walk into a room, you'll find a bunch of different Wi-Fi networks. Yes, you'll find Wi-Fi networks when you go into a room, okay? It shows it. Now, what if there was such a device that would say, let's say you had one of those internets, Gene, and you wanted to find out everyone that had joined up to your internet. Yeah. And you'd also find out what kind of device it was, the IP address of it. the Sure, yep, that's all true. Brand name on it, uh, the MAC address. If I told you that, you'd go, wow, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, you could definitely. catch someone stealing your internet, right? No, that's just how it works. Like, you get all this information when somebody connects to anything at all. I mean, hell, you get that information about somebody when they go to your website. Um, websites collect a ton of data just like when you open your browser. You get IP address and device type and uh, operating system and everything. All kinds of information. That's standard. It's always been standard. That's how it's always worked. So, okay. I'm I'm still not seeing any big revelation that he came to. Press. If I told you that, you'd go, wow, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, you could definitely. catch someone stealing your internet, right? That's right. No, no, there's no stealing the internet here. But yep. here, we can catch them in their lie. It's a wireless monitoring device. You bring it in, in any precinct, any polling thing, it'll pull all the, it'll show you the cell phones online. It works on cellular internet too, everything. Anything that's online. And now you can, you can uh, filter it out, take out all the cell phones. Dude, is this guy selling a new device? Is that what he's doing right now? Is that what this whole thing is about? Is he selling a, de a new device to Trump supporters? I think that's what's happening right now. I think that's what this whole symposium thing was about. Selling some piece of garbage to people. I don't know if you guys remember this guy named David Icke. He's one of the people who pioneered the, you know, the whole lizard people conspiracy theory there are lizard people around every corner you know they run the world and all that other garbage i don't think he came up with it originally but he popularized it heavily in the 90s anyway uh david ike i believe don't quote me on this i think david ike a while back was selling this product where you put it in your pocket and it prevents vaccine shedding it it purifies the air around you and stops vaccine shedding well for one thing this is designed for the covid vaccine of course for one thing the the covid vaccine none of them are capable of shedding it, it's not that kind of vaccine it doesn't work that way at all and for another thing if vaccines were shedding if there if, you know if there was covid like in your breathing space this little device in your pocket isn't going to do anything for you they were very obviously just taking advantage of people, right? They were selling this piece of garbage device to gullible suckers. Am I right? Is that like not what happened back then? That, that seems like what we're looking at again right now with Mike Lindell and uh, this. What did he call this device? What was this? Hold on. Let me see. It'll show you the cell phone. 
Wait, I got to step back here. Them in their lie. It's a wireless monitoring device. WMD. He calls it a WMD. Uh, like weapon of mass destruction, but it's actually a wireless monitoring device. This is just painfully stupid, isn't it? Is it just me? Does it get more stupid and ridiculous than this? Honestly. You bring it in, in any precinct, any polling thing, it'll pull all the, it'll show you the cell phones online. It works on cellular internet too. Every it's completely made up, but okay. Um, I, I was a software engineer for, for six years before becoming a YouTuber. I know how all of this stuff works. In theory, it is possible to have a device like this. Um, I'm not saying that it's impossible, but I'm not sure like what the point is now. Everything, anything that's online, and now you can you can uh, filter it out. Take out all the cell phones. Take out all the watches online. Also, I wouldn't trust anything Mike Lindell has to offer. Take yeah. out all the um, you know, if, if, if you were outside a car that was online, it would take that. Sure. Out. Now you. Fil I don't know of any cars that have their own Wi-Fi network. Filter it down, then you're in a place. Well, now all of a sudden, imagine you're on election night and you have one of these, and uh, you, we all. Okay, I'm imagining. Also, have a way to FrankSocial.com now, our, our from there, where you can watch it. You can sit at home in your easy chair, and it's like Ghostbusters. E -e -e -e, red alert! Red alert! Got another one. You yeah. got another one. <laughs> another. Wait. So, does this thing not even have an interface? Is this just like? Is okay. Wow, this is fascinating. Um, it is actually possible to filter out Wi-Fi. Uh, I I think maybe it's possible to filter out like uh, Wi-Fi transmissions that are coming from phones and differentiate between phones and um, computers and you know uh, whatever routers, blah blah blah. In theory, I suppose it's possible to do that. But I don't know what that would establish. It could be the guy next door. You, a lot of the time, voting systems are hosted at, like, churches, right? Or at, like, schools or whatever. That's where a lot of the voting takes place. There are libraries right next door to a lot of schools. Hell, there are houses next to schools. There are all kinds of different Wi-Fi networks that reach really, really far. Matter of fact, there are a different or a number of different types of Wi-Fi networks. This may be a little bit of outdated information. Just kind of depends on, you know, how much progress we've made since I've looked into this last. But last I knew, there were a number of different standards that were used in the Wi-Fi world. There was um, 802.11a, b, and n, I think. I don't remember exactly if, if those numbers are, or those, uh, the numbers are correct. I don't remember if the letters are correct, but the difference is basically how far the band will go. So n, I, I think, if I remember correctly, again, someone can correct me in the comments on this if I'm wrong, but I believe N would go really, really, really far. It'd go like 500 feet, but it wouldn't be as strong of a signal. It, it would be um, slower and weaker and everything else. But, you know, I think Apple might have come out with like a new standard called 802.11a slash c, which kind of combined the two into something that was like a lot more powerful. I mean, again, it's been a while since I've looked into this, but how could he possibly know that this device is not picking up like the house next door's Wi-Fi or whatever? He couldn't. He couldn't possibly know that. But he's pretending to have like this device that if you just buy this from him for three easy payments of 1999 then you'll be able to stop election fraud at your precinct it's just embarrassing man you can sit at home in your easy chair and it's like ghostbusters okay e e wait a minute wait a minute you can sit at home in your easy chair and catch this these election like uh whatever how could you sit at home in your easy chair and catch election whatever malfeasance
you would have to be at the voting site, right? And even then, it wouldn't prove anything at all. It would prove that there was another network around. What the hell is he talking about right now? What is this WMD for? Eight, red alert, red alert. Got another one. We got yeah. another one. <laughs> another lie caught. Another lie caught. Another lie caught. We now can police our own our own elections in, yeah. in every aspect. So the key here in what you said today, and I was thinking about that this afternoon, uh, it's not the just the fact that you can monitor. You have to be like when uh, 100 yards, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it doesn't matter. You Somewhere bring it right in the room. You know, right the clerks the room. will probably want to have one, you know. Yeah. Uh, within 100 yards. It's about 300 feet. The clerks will want to have one, right? So within 300 feet, if you find a Wi-Fi network within 300 feet, then it's going to detect it. There's a moth in here. That's weird. I feel like I... I feel like I'm kind of confused about how that moth got up here, but okay, whatever. Like, did it take the elevator is my question. Um... The stairs are a little lengthy, so he must have taken the elevator. Anyways, 300 feet, okay? How long is the average house? I think my house when I was growing up was 60 feet long, right? But it, it was like, I don't know, 40 feet wide. So 60 times 40 is uh, um, 2,400. No, it was not that big. Maybe it was 20 feet wide. 20 times 60. Yeah, so 1,200 square feet, that seems a little closer to what my house was growing up. Um, let's see, how long is the average house? God, this is a really specific and weird question. Um, a house is typically between 20 and 25 feet wide and 40 and 50 feet long. And he's saying that this thing detects up to 300 feet away so this little wmd as he calls it is going to detect the wi-fi networks of the five neighbors all around that's what's going to happen it's going to start beeping not because there's a wi-fi network necessarily at the school which there probably is one at the school just not for or at the uh whatever just not for the election systems but because there are Wi-Fi networks all over the place, 100 yards, 300 feet, really? This is insane. But you know what? MAGA people will buy anything, intellectually or physically, even physical objects like a WMD like this. Just embarrassing and painful and sad, dude. Seriously, this is insane. Yeah, so, they, so you can see that. You can see everybody, and yes, that's great, but what's even bigger, Rick Green, let me go to you on this, is the fact now what's really powerful is the other side here is going to know that this technology exists. Because it's now, correct me if I'm wrong here, but this is deeper. Yeah. It's not just something you can do on it, because there's apps out there that can show you available Wi Fi networks. This yeah, is another this, yeah. level. Yeah, this is. A, it, this doesn't doesn't matter if there's Wi-Fi in the room. We yeah. wanted to know. They won't show us what's inside the machines. So they and they went. They'd always said they're not online. They're not online. This the the machines are not online. The voting machines. They they weren't online. Mike Lindell is lying here and continuing to defame Dominion and Smartmatic. And I honestly cannot believe that. He's got the Apple bag to do something like this. On uh, Seriously, like, this is a quick way to get yourself sued out of existence, which he was already on his way to doing, it seems to me. But, okay. This is yeah. the only device I know in the world that was developed. It took over a year that now will say, hey, you just... It took you over a year to make a device that would filter out phone, uh, like, phone um, Wi-Fi networks? That actually surprises the hell out of me. I'll tell you what, guys. You know what? It's been a while since I've done any programming. Let me see what I can do. Let me see what I can do. Let me see. This is, this is going to be a little, a fun little thing for you guys. Fun little exercise. I'm going to blow up the screen, and I'm going to do just a few seconds of programming real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about, how super super basic and simple this is okay owenmorgan.com don't need to subscribe to the email list 
Thanks anyways, buddy. Okay. Let's see if I can uh, log in here. You're not supposed to show your face when you're typing your password because you move your lips in the shape of the letters that you're typing or the numbers or whatever, even unconsciously. Like Even if you're focused on not typing the password, even if your mouth is closed when you're doing it, it's, it's easy to do. So let's see. I'll show you guys my screen so you guys can see what I'm working with here, all right? This is the this is my screen, my programming screen. At the very bottom here, see I can type, right? So let's just go into a uh, a prompt. I might have to blur some of this later, but I trust you guys for now. Let's see if I go into a prompt here. I just create like um. I'm gonna make a directory named test directory and go into it. Okay, now I'm gonna make a a. A URL named uh, this is the the file nano test file dot php. Um, now what is it? I I think it's is this the command info? Oh my god, it's been a while since it done PHP. Just let me look it up real quick. I, is it echo? I think it's echo, right? Let me just do echo on PHP. Hello. Okay. So I'm going to save test test file.php and now I'm going to go there. Ownmorgan.com slash test dir slash test file.php. Let's pull this puppy up. Looks like I'm not going to be able to demonstrate what I was hoping to demonstrate, unfortunately, but there's this. I remember the function now. It's called PHP info. It's all you got to do create a PHP file. God, I could have created a subdomain. I mean, this would take, you know, it'd take me 20 minutes to get it thrown together. I don't have that kind of time, unfortunately, on a live stream. But create a file on a website and then put uh, like a, a little caret and a question mark and put PHP, new line, PHP info, parenthesis, close parenthesis, semicolon. And then question mark and then the other carrot. And boom, that's it. Every website or every person that goes to that website to look at, you know, the PHP info function will have every last bit of data that it, you know, records that you send to it. Your computer sends this information to, you know, a server, a, a website, a computer or whatever every time you go to the website and there's really nothing you can do to stop it like that's how the internet has worked since forever that's just how the internet works you send data to websites and he's acting like he he's he's telling us he spent a year building this system out what i could literally spend 20 minutes doing it to just you know repeat back to you like what your system is 20 minutes. What took you a year to do here? I don't understand. This is crazy. It's crazy to me that anybody believes a word out of this guy's mouth at this point. He's like the least credible person alive. Unfortunately, we still have to talk about the dude. Sadly, there are people out there that do believe the things that he says. You got a thousand people to show up this to this uh, uh, symposium, and I don't know if he got four million people to view it. Probably not, but it wasn't zero online. It was probably somewhere in the vicinity of a million, right? Probably got a million views on some of this stuff, I guess. Insane to me that people buy this stuff. Let me know what you think about it in the comments.